Hello and welcome to Ask GMBN Tech. We've gone for a quick walk on a brisk winter's morning and what can I say, appropriate clothing's for losers. Let's get on with the show. Okay, dokily, so let's rattle through these questions quickly and hopefully it will warm me up a bit. So the first question is from Callum Richards and they want to know, can you put a 50 tooth Sun Ringle cassette on a 42 tooth Shimano drivetrain as both of 11 speeds? Well, listen, you can. The issue is that that um, 11 speed Shimano um, rear derailleur isn't built with a 50 tooth in mind. In fact, originally when they came out, they were 42 tooth. The next year they came out 46 tooth. And even on 46 tooth, I think that they do kind of hmm, begin, begin to be pushed closer towards their limit. The issue is that as you want it to clear that 50 tooth, you have to have more and more B tension, which pushes the derailleur further back. So once you have the jockey wheels appropriately far enough away from the cassette to clear that 50 tooth, then it compromises the shift as you go to the smaller sprockets. So it might work quite well here, but the shift can sometimes become maybe sloppy or, hmm, what would be the word? You know, not that punchy when you're going to the higher gears, which are the smaller sprockets. If you are going to do this, a new cable with less friction in the system will help give more precise shifting as you go to those smaller cogs, but it will be probably kind of limited in how good it can actually be because you're having to put so much B tension on. The next question is from Marco Garandi and he says, what did he like accent I did? I'm quite impressed with myself. I probably got it wrong, but I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite happy with that. What happens if you fit a lower travel shock on your bike? Well, first of all, I'd say that travel isn't really a term that you should use to um, describe shocks because travel is derived from the where the, you know what the axle's doing where the wheels going so you get wheel travel now what you get with shocks the two crucial measurements are eye to eye so from one hole of the shock to the other and then stroke length the stroke length is how far that shaft can go into the shock now various linkages will have different uh, ratios which will derive a different amount of wheel travel from the stroke. Now, if you wanted to change the stroke length of your shock, you can actually mess around with that. You can basically, without affecting your bike too negatively, have a little play. Obviously not with standing clearance issues. The problem is, if you go to a different eye to eye, you can imagine if it goes drastically shorter, it's gonna be, and you still wanna run your bike at say the same sag, it's gonna be really dropping your bottom bracket and it's gonna completely compromise the geometry and the feel of your bike. So I'd say as long as you keep the same eye to eye, you can have a little play in stroke length. Sometimes, you know, I've had bikes that have come with, say, we're going to talk about it later on actually, with a 65 mil stroke, and I've taken it down to 60 mil to make it kind of more trail bikey. It sits higher in its travel, which then steepens the seat tube, etc., etc. So eye to eye, don't mess with stroke length. You can have a little play. Next question from Velichko Golev, and they ask, can you please explain a bit what would be the pros and cons of running a shorter size crank set on a trail bike. They note that a lot of downhill bikes run 165 mil cranks and 175 bikes generally come on trail bikes. Are shorter cranks just for shorter leg people or anyone can give them a try or can anyone give them a try? Um, well, this is something, this is a cause close to my heart. <laughs> I once read many a year ago that actually British Cycling tried to do some tests to find out whether there is a discernible performance increase or decrease in crank length. And even their tests were inconclusive because there are so many variables in terms of gear ratio, etc., etc. I think crank length is a really personal fit. Now I know, although it's kind of under wraps, some downhill races that run as short as 150, if you can believe it, and I know some people that run, you know, 175, 180 more than happily. For me, um, I don't really, I think in terms of clearance, you kind of get used to where your cranks are, and especially if you're riding, you know, flat footed through turns and rough stuff, it doesn't play too much factor. The thing for me is, um, is what it does to my hip. As you're at the top of the stroke, 
a taller, a, sorry, a longer crank will be bringing your leg further into your body. That doesn't really play well with me personally, so I like to run shorter cranks, if only for that reason. Um, but it is really personal preference. I think at time, things like crank length, bottom bracket height, it's actually quite a complicated thing because it's got many contributing factors. You know, people sometimes obsess over five mil in the bottom bracket height and then run pedals that thick with their shoes that thick and it, well, it all goes out the window. It's part of a bigger package and it's about finding something that works for you. I, like I said, really like short cranks, but maybe they're not for everyone. What do you guys think? Get in the comments. There was a moment there, there was a stiff breeze rolling through and I'm worried it's going to descend into touching the void or something like that. It's pretty high octane stuff this. But on to the next question, which is from Sateri. And they say, well this one's actually for Doddy. Hey Doddy, I love your tutorials and your hair by the way. I'll be sure to pass it on. And I was wondering of the process of bedding in brake pads, which depends on the material of your pads. Now they mentioned that Neil did a video about bedding in brakes once and there were lots of discussion in the comments and also other videos online and sometimes they vary what is the right way to do it well so this is kind of a, got two elements to it i would say in regards to other people you know getting in the comments maybe different tutorials online you know if you got the five best chefs in the world and you asked them to cook you a steak all the steaks they cooked you would probably be delicious but they probably will cook them very differently and I think it's actually the same for bike maintenance. Now, there are some things you should never do. You know, don't go pouring WD-40 all over your rotors, but, you know, there's actually, it's open to interpretation. And I think with working on stuff, often the ends do justify the means, you know? Um, but in regards to your question in particular, for me, I just like to get my, my calipers centered well and by that I mean all the pistons are nice and active. You don't want to be just doing it with one piston doing all the work. And then yeah, I do some rolling, um, some rolling to some firm braking and repeat. Some people squirt water on, and I believe this would be to kind of increase, increase the wear rate slightly of the pads. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the pads to wear perfectly parallel to the rotor. Um, in terms of materials, I think the only thing you really need to watch out for is if that rotor in question has been used with a different braking material before. For instance, if it's been used with sintered, so metallic pad, which is quite hard, then it's sometimes hard to achieve decent braking performance when going to a softer compound or organic, organic pad. Um, but the other way, because the metal pa metallic pads are so hard, you can tend to, you know, they'll tear straight through whatever the um, organic pad laid down. That's all I really bear in mind. I just think, fit your pads, square up, in the, square up in the caliper, go for a gentle roll, do some firm braking, and that's all I do, and it really works for me. So next is a question from Ao G, and this is actually the first of two questions about the shocks on Nukeproof Megas. So let's get into it. They say they are thinking of changing to a coil on my Nukeproof Mega, and I've done all of the research and spoke to a lot of people who live by it. The issue is the awkward size of the shock, which is a 230 by 65, which he can't seem to find anywhere second hand. And they were wondering if it's worth going to a shop to modify a bigger, i.e. 241 by 76, to the right size. Thank you. Well, um, the, problem, the problem you're running into is that it is a metric size shock, that 230 by 65 measurement. And metric hasn't really been that prevalent in terms of the mass market for, you know, that long so there might not be that many shocks available cheap and second hand um listen we're talking about eye to eye i think eye to eye is kind of king yes maybe if they can get it bang on by modding it then i can't see it being too wrong but i would imagine it's going to be harder than you think to do um in terms of finding a shock that fits you could run a 230 by 65 mil stroke and take out the five mil spacer to run 60 mil stroke. You mentioned you're looking to run a 230 by 65 mil um, stroke, which yeah, is quite a common size, but also it has the same dimensions as a shock that is 230 by 60 mil. The only difference being the 60 mil shock, well, the 60 mil stroke shock has a five mil spacer, which for someone that's comfortable taking apart and rebuilding shocks is no real hassle to remove. Um, 
you can, even if you wanted to, run that 60mm stroke on the Mega, which would reduce the travel a bit if you wanted something that perhaps is a shade less burly. Um, but yeah, it shouldn't be, I mean, it's kind of annoying, you know, availability, especially when people ask about secondhand stuff, where to find something secondhand, but obviously it depends where you're living and all that sort of stuff. Um, but stick with it. I would say try and stick to the metric sizing and it will be a lot better for your bike. Okay, so Nuke Proof Mega Shock Question Numero Dos. And it is from Colin Fitzgerald. And they ask, I currently own a 2018 Nuke Proof Mega 275 Pro. And I would like to fit a super deluxe coil shock. I've noticed that a lot of people with the 290 run one, but I rarely see any coil shocks on the 275. Is there a reason for this? Um, well, that coil shock, in terms of its factory spec, comes on that beautiful 290 Works, the raw one, which, yeah, does look pretty cool. Um, why doesn't it come on the 275? Um, it's, I mean, I haven't actually seen, compared the leverage ratios between the two bikes. Maybe there's something in that. Certain kinematics will, you know, be better suited to either a coil, which is more linear, or an air shock, which can be more progressive. Um, why would you run a coil shock? Well, you tend to want a bit more small bump compliance, but I found on the Megas, actually, for an air shock, they're remarkably supple on the rear end. Um, especially they've got quite a low compression tune and that plays really nice in it. You know, I always thought they were really, 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 they tracked the ground superbly. Um, you know, why wouldn't they just sell it as standard? Well, one of the metrics that people use when comparing bikes and they think about buying bikes is weight. Now weight, I don't really, it doesn't really matter to me personally, but to some people it really, really does. Now, that would be a real reason for a manufacturer not to spec a coil shock. Not only is it not so adjustable, but when picking up two bikes in the shop, shop one can feel drastically different. Um, so that's kind of the reasons that companies tend to stay away from coil shocks, adjustability and weight, but some people really like them. I'm a bit of a fan myself. The last question is from Marcus, and they say, I'm thinking to upsize on my downhill bike by going for a Mondraker Summum in XL. Then they note they're 182 centimeters tall. It is a bit too big for me, so they want to adjust it with headset cups. If I use the Geo Kit, which changes the head angle by up to two degrees on both sides up and down, is it possible to shorten the wheelbase and the reach? If so, by how much? So this question has got a couple of elements to it. Now, as far as I'm aware, those geo kits that come with those Mondrakers, they're already angled. So you can't run them, if you imagine running both cups in their shortest setting, then it could reduce the reach. But what you'd have to do is run the top one in its shortest setting and the bottom one in its slacker setting, which would kind of do half of the job, i.e. bring the bars maybe slightly closer back towards you, but it would also increase the wheelbase, which is Sounds like you don't want to do. Um, you know, those Mondrakers have a real short seat tube and you're the same height as me. That XL isn't as long in the reach as some other brands large. So maybe you could have an experiment with it. If you wanted to shorten the reach, you'd want to use a reach adjust headset as opposed to an angle set, or at least those Mondraker ones. Some angle sets have a kind of a cup and comb mechanism, so they have a great degree of adjustability. The ones like in that Mondraker kit are set but you could use an angle set which would bring it back in just a tip though when you're installing them if you use a big press it can sometimes turn the cups a bit so if you just gently work around with a small toffee hammer and get them in that way it means you can keep them straighter when we talk about frame reach it's a really funny measurement because it is a frame measurement so it runs from that center of the BB all the way through the frame and dissects the steering axis at the top of the, the head tube. Now what happens if you move that steering axis internal to the head tube? <sighs> so it's kind of complicated. I think it's about appreciating that frame reach is specific to bicycles and it is a bicycle measurement. Um, how much is going to take off it's hard to say if you use the angle set but if depending which reach adjust you get it will tell you pretty definitively. And that's a wrap from me on this week's Ask GMBN Tech. Now, get in the comments below with your own questions. Hashtag Ask GMBN Tech. Why the hell is Henry wearing shorts? It's time for me to rustle back to the office for a hot chocolat and get on with my day. Now, thank you very much for watching. If you want to stick with the channel, click down here to enjoy some videos from us. We'll see you later, guys.